The work 18th. A nuisance to myself. You only do it to annoy me. Smoking all the time. How do you expect me to keep things clean? You never lift a finger to help me. I wish you'd never come home. 20 years in the mental hospital pretending to be ill. Any excuse to avoid work. Then you come home as if you'd never been away. Where's my tea? Haven't you got any biscuits? And pestering me to sleep in the same bed with you after all these years. I'm not one of those nurses, you know. And you can wipe that smile off your face too. It's no joke. I stopped at the corner of the house. My grandmother's voice was coming from the back garden. She was 90 years old but still did her own shopping and looked after her own garden. She was on her knees with her back to me, weeding a flower bed. She was in conversation with my grandfather, who had died 10 years earlier. Before I could say hello, she began again, talking to herself this time. My poor Albert, I don't know how she tricked you. All that powder and paint. She had no shame. That woman, you could have done better for yourself than that. She was a bad wife. She treated me like dirt. Your own mother. You don't know what went on while you were away in the Air Force. I know how she's made you suffer. Albert, leave her. Come back to your mom. This is where you belong, Albert. Oh, Albert. She fumbled for a handkerchief. Her thin back heaving as she sobbed in desperation. My uncle Albert had emigrated to Australia 15 years before. His marriage had not been happy. She had never recovered from losing him. You watch out, Carrie, she cried out suddenly. If we don't get these brushes done by the time mum gets home, we'll be in trouble. Oh, your poor fingers, Carrie. They're all raw and bloody. Let me put some ointment on them. Carrie, she called as she heard my footsteps. Hello Gran, I said. Let me give you a hand. I helped her to her feet. Hello, Frank, she said with a smile. I thought it was my sister Carrie for a moment. I'm getting confused. Let's have a cup of tea. We went into the old bungalow. What a life she had led, I thought. At 12 she worked 10 hours a day at home putting the stiff bristles into brushes. Her mother was a widow at 30 with six children to bring up. Gran had married at 25. A month later her husband left for the Western Front. He came back a physical and mental wreck. Somehow they had managed. When the Second World War started, my grandfather had broken down and gone into the mental hospital. She brought up her kids and still managed to visit him regularly for 20 years. She was tough. Yet there was still a gentle side to her. I was her favorite grandson. How are you, Gran? I asked, as she poured the tea. I mustn't grumble, you know. I'm not so bad for an old oldoon. But I want to tell you something. I can still do everything for meself, she whispered. But sometimes I feel as if I'm getting to be a nuisance to meself. She looked at me with her deep-set gray eyes, and winked. A month later my mother called me in New York. My gran had died in her sleep.